Welcome to Rock the Boat with Richard Hagen, your weekly dose of international boating, super yachting, and maritime industry news and opinions. Tonight, I've got a really nice mix of news for you, but before I get started, please remember to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the video, and maybe even subscribe too, it really helps us out. Alright, let's punch the throttles and find out what's been happening this past week. We kick this week's episode off with a sleek new model from Italian manufacturer Van Dutch. The boat you're looking at here is the Van Dutch 32 and it's just made its global debut at a star-studded party at Lake Garda in Italy. Van Dutch offers 5 boats ranging from this 32 up to a 75 foot boat, but they all share the same design aesthetic which the company describes as minimalist and iconic. All of the boats feature clean lines flowing to a vertical, wave piercing bow. They all have a flat, minimalist foredeck and side decks and an open cockpit with a low profile wraparound windscreen. They're not super practical and honestly they're not exactly my cup of tea, but I can appreciate them for what they are. If you've never seen these boats before, the main thing to know is that Van Dutch boats are basically water taxis for beautiful people throwing parties in sun-drenched environments in calm seas. And they're eye-wateringly expensive as well. A used 2015 55 foot Van Dutch will cost you just over a million US dollars. But Van Dutch prides itself on the celebrities and high profile people who own and have been spotted on its boat, so I guess for that kind of target market, maybe it's it's pretty affordable. But back to the 32. At the rear you've got a basic swim platform and a sun pad big enough for two or maybe three people. Ahead of that in the cockpit there's L-shaped seating. The helm position consists of a single seat on the port side facing a minimalist steering wheel, a throttle and a 12 inch multifunction Garmin display with the option of an upgrade to a larger 16 inch screen. This is what they call a day boat, meaning you probably won't spend the night on it, but you can. There's a fairly basic cabin below deck with sleeping room for two and right in the bow there's a small heads compartment. Engine options on the Van Dutch 32 range from a single stern drive Volvo Penta V8 petrol engine with 430 horsepower up to dual Volvo Penta D4 300 horsepower diesel stern drives for a combined total of 600 horsepower. If you'd like to learn more about the Van Dutch range head on over to vandutch.com. Finnish yacht builder Nautis Swan has revealed a brand new model, the Swan 58. The company says that the Swan 58 is designed to be a no compromise blue water sailing yacht. It says that boats in this category typically sacrifice performance and the pleasure of sailing at the altar of safety and comfort. According to them, the 58 is all of these things in one. When we talk about blue water yachting, we're referring to deep water or the ability to cross oceans and maybe even circle the globe. To make all of this possible, the yard roped in renowned naval architect Germain Freres to design the hull. He's known for designing successful racing yachts with over a thousand hulls to his studio's name. His focus for the 58 is said to have been on developing a yacht that would be a proper but also beautiful blue water cruiser and which could be easily crewed by a couple without any help from a large crew. The final product is a yacht that Nauta Swan says can sail in comfort anywhere in the world with enough space on board to live at a high standard for extended periods. On deck and starting at the stern there's a small tender garage with space for a jet tender. Above that there are dual helm positions. Ahead of the helm is the cockpit with large bench seats and tables with fold down leaves. Below deck the designer interior offers a standard layout that puts the owner's suite in the bow and there are twin guest cabins aft with your choice of bed sizes in those guest cabins. There are three heads compartments, two of which have separate shower stalls. The large living area between the accommodation enjoys loads of natural light from both hull windows and deck windows above. The galley has been specifically designed to be usable even while the yacht is heeling or leaning over under sail. Ahead of the galley there's a dinette that can seat up to 10 people for meals. As with most yachts of this caliber and size, the buyer is able to pick from loads of different options to customize their boat and the Nautilus Swan 58 is no different. There are plenty of interior layouts and finishes, exterior finishes and colors and several kill options to choose from. I don't have enough time and space on this video to go through all of them so if you're interested and want to find out more about this beautiful new yacht from the frozen north visit nautiluswan.com. 
For my next story, we head back to Italy to check out another boat from the land of delicious pasta and fast cars. Italian luxury yacht builder ISA, short for International Shipyard Ancona, has taken the wraps off its super fast new sports cruiser, the ISA Super Sportivo 100 GTO. That's quite a mouthful. This is a yacht that embodies everything that we all love about Italian machines. It's all about going as fast as possible and looking as good as possible while doing it. The naval architecture for the Super Sportivo 100 GTO was penned by the well-known Studio Arnaboldi who set out to design a real sprinter using a combination of fiberglass and carbon fiber. And boy did they design a beast of a fast boat. Power comes from not one, not two, but three engines. These are MAN 12V turbo diesel power plants putting out an earth-shattering 2000 horsepower each, all of them linked to marine jet power water jet. The yacht was designed to reach about 50 knots, but in its first sea trials, it comfortably smashed through the 55 knot mark, or 101 kilometers per hour, exceeding the theoretical calculations behind its design. Impressive. At its cruising speed of 44 knots, the company says it has a range of about 550 nautical miles. But the Super Sportiva 100 GTO is not only about going fast. According to the company, nothing was sacrificed in terms of comfort and furnishings in side as well. To find out more about the Super Sportivo 100 GTO, visit isayachts.com. South African super yacht builder Southern Wind recently launched a beautiful new all-custom high-performance sailing yacht named Taniwa and they've finally given us some video of it. The yacht hit the water for the first time last month in June and it has been busy conducting sea trials in Table Bay in Cape Town. It was designed by Norta Yacht Design to be a comfortable but fast blue water cruiser. The yard says that the yacht combines lightweight construction with a powerful sail plan. The deck is intentionally minimalist, with the wide cockpit all on a single level. Below deck, the owner's cabin is located in the bow, and in the stern, there's a VIP cabin with a central island bed and a guest cabin with two single beds next door. Between the accommodation in the bow and the stern, there's a large open plan living space. Southern Wind says that the main challenge in building the interior was to make it homely, whilst also keeping the weight down and still using eco-friendly materials. Taniwa has an overall length of 32 meters and a beam of 7.31 meters. When it's not under sail, it's powered by a single Cummins QSB 305 horsepower engine. Taniwa has been built for an international customer and the yard says that it will soon leave on its delivery voyage to its new home overseas. I wish it and its crew fair winds and following seas. And now, here's a boat that is basically a cross between a yacht and a stealth bomber, the Hans Tiger X1 Trimaran. The X1 is unlike anything most of us have ever seen, both in terms of construction and design. Its hull is built using a combination of glass fiber, titanium, and carbon fiber, while its superstructure is 100% carbon fiber. The jaw-dropping design starts at the stern, which is where you access the yacht from. The entire aft section opens up to reveal the lounge area, complete with couches, a dining table, and a large galley. To ensure that the space stays cool with the big beach club doors open, there are large angular windows on either side of the ceiling that open at the press of a button, allowing warm air out and sea breezes to blow through the boat. On the starboard side, the professional galley is packed with Miele appliances, a waste disposer, two ice makers, and a wine fridge. Ahead of that, there's a fully appointed luxurious VIP cabin. Across from that cabin, on the opposite side of the boat, is a large multifunctional space which includes motorized airplane style lounge seats and a day bed facing a TV with entertainment options including a PlayStation. Perfect for entertaining the kids and, well, maybe the adults too. The spectacular owner's cabin is in the center of the boat, right in the bow and it is just beautiful. Unlike any other bow cabin, in this one the bed faces towards the bow, where generous hull and ceiling windows allow huge amounts of natural light in. There's a day bed tucked into the tip of the bow, perfect for relaxing during a lazy morning while you watch the water sparkle around the boat. The entire interior is air conditioned with a 120,000 BTU aircon system to keep things cool and comfy when the windows are closed. Now that's my kind of luxury. For me, the absolute star of the show though is the helm station and the flybridge behind it. The helm station itself looks like the 
flight deck of a stealth bomber. There are two Recaro racing seats behind steering wheels that look like plane yokes. The helm includes two Garmin 21 inch touchscreen displays linked to a 16 camera system that features thermal and long range night vision cameras for total accuracy during nighttime bombing raids. And as if that wasn't enough to make you feel like you're piloting a jet, the entire tinted glass roof above the helm station is able to lift up on motorized struts, just like the canopy of a fighter jet. This opens up the whole helm space and connects it with the social area in the flybridge behind it. The flybridge area features another unique touch. It has a centrally mounted barbecue and wet bar area. That's unique because normally these facilities would be found tucked away to one side of the flybridge. Right at the stern is a large dinette featuring a gloss black table with X1 branding. Having the barbecue in a central island configuration creates clear line of sight and movement between the helm station and the dinette at the stern. It's an extremely striking and practical arrangement and honestly, I absolutely love it. Next to the dinette tucked into the corner is a jacuzzi so you can enjoy some bubbly while sitting in bubbles and watching the sun go down. There are also two crew cabins in the bow of each outrigger which is just jargon for the two outside hulls. So if you'd rather just sit back and have someone else do the work of getting you from point A to B then you've got the space for them. The X1 has a neat hidden trick up its sleeve that I haven't mentioned yet. Back at the beach club area in the stern, there's a tender garage hidden underneath the floor. You access it at the press of a button which folds the floor open and reveals a float-in, float-out tender garage. This then allows you to step directly in or out of the tender and then simply motor away from the yacht. None of the usual fussing with cranes, winches, pulleys or chocks. This space also becomes a fantastic swim platform as well. An inflatable pontoon allows you to just walk into or out of the sea from directly inside the yacht. Amazing and fun. In terms of power, there are several Volvo Penta engine options on offer depending on whether or not you choose the sailing configuration. The yacht also has a lithium battery bank linked to a 7,515 kilowatt inverter, which is capable of powering 100% of the boat's electrical needs in complete silence for a period of time. The system is recharged partially via solar panels built into the superstructure. But how does this beast actually ride? Well, under sail, the yacht has achieved around 18 knots, which is pretty good for a yacht of this kind and size. The unique wave piercing hulls have been complemented for their ability to slice through the water and maintain a stable, enjoyable ride. The Hans Tiger X1 is available as either a sailing catamaran or as a power cat and of course both the interior and the outdoor spaces are completely customizable to your tastes and requirements. Which is good because the self bomber of the sea doesn't come cheap. If you're prepared to buy used then you're in luck because the boat in this video is for sale. At the time of making this video it was listed at the bargain price of 4.2 million euros. Time to start saving. For more information on this beautiful, insane beast of a yacht, head over to hansteiger.com. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you didn't know, when I'm not researching, writing and producing these videos, I pay the bills as a marketing copywriter. I've got a passion for the boating and marine industry in general, and I would love to hear from you the next time you need anything written up. Talk to me for competitive rates on everything from blogs to email marketing, product descriptions and even video scripts. I'm easy to find too. You can reach out to me on either LinkedIn or via my website via the details in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.